Hey everyone, thanks for being here. Um, thank you to Mint Bean for having us. Thank you to Jennifer and Maggie for helping set this up and helping run this. I'm um, really excited to be here to talk with you guys about Redwood JS. Um, Mint Bean has done quite a few events already with uh, the Redwood community, doing some talks with um, some of the different core community members and creators of the framework. Um, I'm pretty low down on the totem pole. I'm just, you know, kind of a guy who really enjoys the framework, finds it really interesting, and I like going out and kind of teaching it to people and explaining how it works and um, like what the ideas behind it are, because I think it's a really fascinating project. and. Um, I know Monarch a little bit, and he's talked about how he thinks this new space of like what we're calling full stack jam stack frameworks have a lot of potential as like teaching tools. And when he first told me this, I, I, got, I got the feeling that he has like pitched this idea to a lot of people and they find it a bit unintuitive. Whereas I was immediately like, yeah, duh, like that's exactly what happened to me. Like I found these frameworks and I was, you know, learning React at the same time, and when I found Redwood, it just, like, made sense to my brain in, in a way that, like, this other stuff that I was learning didn't. So, yeah, the, the kind of idea of using this as a teaching tool can sound a little crazy at first because it's so many different technologies that are, like, cutting edge and can be really complicated to wrap your head around, but um, the way that they've all been put together it makes them a lot more comprehensible than you would think at first. So I'm going to go ahead and get my slides up. So we'll do a little slides and then we will do an actual live demo where I'll kind of build up a really simple project and show you guys how to deploy it to two different deploy targets. So Redwood JS and the Universal Deployment Machine. This is just some resources of what we'll be going over. If you go to these links right now, they will not go anywhere because we're going to create them. But if you just add a dash test next to those after the RW, you can kind of see the, the trial run I did yesterday as I was building this out. So we're going to basically make a GitHub repo and then we're going to deploy our project to Vercel and to Netlify. And we can do all of that in the span of just 30 minutes, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> All right, Redwood JS. It is a full stack serverless framework for the Jam stack. This is one of those definitions that if you already know what these words mean, then you'd be like, oh yeah, sure. It's a serverless framework for the Jam stack, duh. But if you've never heard of serverless or Jam stack, this may be a bit incomprehensible to you. So a slightly simpler, more basic definition that I kind of like is that it's a program for generating web apps, which basically means it's a tool that we use to build things that we put on the internet. So Redwood is about enabling developers to create websites or web applications and create them quickly and with confidence that what you're creating is going to work the way you expect it to. These are the core members who are working on it. We've got Tom Preston Warner is the co-creator with Peter Pistorius. Um, they were working on this for over a year, and we're talking about it probably even longer than that before it launched in March. And so they're really the core in terms of like the ideas that formed the framework. And then Rob has come on to help with creating the tutorial and for building out some projects around Redwood. He's working on something called repeater.dev, which is a background job processing tool and then David Price is the community manager type guy. So if you get into Redwood, if you're going on the forums, if you're talking in the Discord, you'll definitely see him a lot. He'll be answering questions for you. He'll be helping you out. Um, super kind guy. And he's you know, really helped me get spun up in the community and, and get going. So this is a totally real quote that was definitely not taken out of context. Redwood is the best framework ever created. <laughs> if not the culmination of nearly 80 years of computer programming methodologies. Redwood JS core member, Rob Cameron. Now, these are quotes that are less taken out of context. This is Tom from two different podcast interviews that he's done. The first one was from JS Party, and the second one was from Shop Talk. So I'm just here to read these out for you. Full stack web application development is the next evolution of Jamstack. 
that becomes a primary place that you would deploy a full stack web application. And that's what Redwood JS is about. And then the second quote is where he talks about the universal deployment machine, which is what this talk is about. So my dream of a future is for something I'd call a universal deployment machine, which means I write my code, it's all text. I just write text. Then I commit to GitHub that it's picked up and it's deployed into reality. That's it, that's the whole thing. That's what I want, that's what I've been looking for. So if you're trying to figure out what Redwood is about, I really re recommend you check out some of Tom's podcast interviews because he's gone really in depth in talking about like what Redwood is. And I was listening to these podcast interviews as they were coming out. And it's what kind of helped me wrap my mind around like what Redwood is and what it's supposed to do. Now, this is the architectural diagram of how Redwood works. And this could be a little overwhelming the first time you look at it. So we're going to break this down into just a few pieces. The, the points that you really need to focus on as a developer is the stuff on the left where it says Redwood code base. And then we have API folder, which is our back end. And then we have our web folder which is our front end. So let's look at each of those individually. The web front end, if you've ever used Create React app or if you've built like a Vue project, if you've used any sort of these like front end JavaScript heavy frameworks, they, they will look fairly similar to this. You have an index.html and you have an index.js. And what's happening is you're, you have a div in your index.html, which will say like app, and then you will load in the app to that div, and then all the things that your app is will be contained inside that one kind of like app component. And then they also have a routes folder for your routing, so a lot of the routing is, is handled for you here. And we're going to, uh, I'm gonna show you all the pieces of uh, a regular Redwood project, but actually most of these we're not going to be using because we're going to be focusing on just the deployment. So the pages is really the only thing we're going to be using. We're going to make a page and we're going to link between two different pages. So on our right here, we have a pretty standard component. It's um, a home page component. So we're declaring our home page on line three, and then we're setting that equal to an arrow function. And then in the arrow function, we're returning that component right there. So we have our uh, little fragments. That's the, the opening and closing brackets that are holding in all of our HTML. And then we have an H1, so a simple header. It says mint, mint bean. And then a paragraph says this is the home page. And then we have a nav bar with an unordered list of two list items. And you can see there we have link to route.home or link to routes.about. Uh, Redwood JS has their own built-in router. So if you've ever used React Router and had to figure out how to set up your routes and your, and your links and all that, you don't have to do that with Redwood. It's all kind of baked in from the beginning, which is really nice because routing is not something as kind of like a beginning developer that you, you really want to think about. <laughs> it's going to cause you far more problems than you'll ever be able to solve. We won't look at layouts today, but this is how you could basically take your nav bar and have it be around all of your pages by default so you don't have to keep creating your nav bar and putting it in every single page. You can just create a generic layout that all of your pages will live inside. And then we won't look at cells at all either, but this is how we do data fetching. So if you set up your database and you have blog posts in your database and you want to get those blog posts back out from your database, this is how you would do it. And it's set up in a way where you don't have to figure out whether your data is loading or empty or if you've gotten an error or if it's worked or not. It's all kind of there baked in out of the box. So a lot of this stuff I've talked about in, in other talks, if you want to go deeper into the actual Redwood architecture, but like I said, since we'll be talking about deployment specifically, I just wanted to kind of give you a brief idea of, of these things, but you're not going to have to worry about any of that. All right. The next thing we're going to look at is the API section. So this is the top left. And again, the vast majority of the stuff we're not going to use. So your back end is how you get your database set up and how you get your front end to talk to your database and we use something called Prisma, which is 
a query builder. If you have ever heard of an ORM, object relational mapper, it's a little bit like that. It's just a way to simplify talking to our backend so we don't have to write raw SQL. If you've ever had to write raw SQL, it's um, very different from writing JavaScript. So this helps us be able to kind of stay in JavaScript land and not have to jump over into the database SQL land as much. So we have a Prisma schema where we set our data source and create our models. So we won't be doing any of this today. And then you'll create a schema definition language. This is all related to GraphQL stuff. If you're interested in GraphQL, Redwood is a really, really cool project to be on because it's all based around GraphQL. It's like, really, that's kind of like the most baked in fundamental part of it. Like I could imagine React, I can imagine Redwood without, without React. I couldn't really imagine Redwood with, without GraphQL. And then your services is how your backend talks to your, your database. And then this is your database client. So don't really need to worry about any of that. And then we've got our functions here, which is what stitches together all of our backend. So that's kind of all just like a teaser for people who want to learn more about the, the whole kind of stack. But what we're going to do is we're going to just spin up a simple little project. I've already gone ahead and created it before time just because it might take a little while with um, having your streaming. It will kind of slow down. <laughs> so what we did so far is I entered this command here. So Redwood, or sorry, yarn create Redwood app and then period slash mint bean RW. So what that did is it created a folder, which is mint bean. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff here. <laughs> mint bean redwood. And then we did yarn redwood dev, which is what started our development server. And it opened up this thing right here. So this is your main redwood kind of starter page. And I'm going to open this up. It's going to be. So this is going to be our project just out of the box. So I've generated this project and I haven't done anything else with it. So the first thing we should do, because we are responsible developers, is take a look at our readme. So if we take a look at the readme, this is going to give us just a little bit of information in terms of where Redwood is at right now. So you'll notice that it says, warning, Redwood JS software has not reached a stable version 1.0 and should not be considered suitable for production use. Now this just means that Redwood is currently in the process of being created in the sense that it is not at version 1.0. If you've ever wondered, how do we even decide what makes something 1.0 versus 0.9 versus 0.0.73? Well, that's actually interesting because what we think of as versioning numbers came from the creator of Redwood, actually, Tom Preston Warner, created something that we call semantic versioning. So semantic is a fancy word for a word that means things. So semantic just meaning that our versions should have meaning. So if we are before version one, that should mean that it's not ready yet. <laughs> and that's kind of like the whole point of not being at version one. So we're working on it. And the plan is to get to version one by the end of this year. So right now is actually a really, really exciting time to, to be involved in Redwood JS because we're kind of right at that point of like, we've been doing this, or I am, but the whole team has been doing this for years. I've been in this for, you know, five months or so. And we're about to get to the point where we're really going to be like pushing this to be like, this is it, this is ready to go. This is the thing. So we're almost there. We also have the tutorial, the docs, and the community link. Um, these are all really fantastic resources. The tutorial especially was like kind of life-changing for me because it's what really helped me understand like the whole system in, in a way that like just like clicked immediately for me, which was really cool. So I highly recommend checking out the tutorial. They put a ton of work into it and we're actually working on kind of like the second iteration of it right now, which is really exciting. 
And then it gives you your setup commands. We use yarn instead of NPM. And then you just do yarn redwood dev to fire up your dev server. You can shorten redwood to just RW. And yeah, so now that we've got our thing set up, let's get this over here and we'll get this over here. And first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to generate a page. So we're gonna do yarn, redwood, generate page home. And then it's going to create a home page that's going to go to our home route. So that's what that slash is. And then what this is going to do is it's going to create a page under web source pages, home page, home page. And there it is. So there's a lot of, it may look like there's a lot going on in terms of your project structure, but once you get used to it, you'll kind of know where everything is and it's, it's really nice to use. So here we've got our home page, and then this is our home page. So if we want to edit this, just to see what it looks like. We can do that. And we can do that. Oops. And there we go. And if we want to create another page, we can go back here. Sorry, all my Zoom stuff always gets in the way. All right, Redwood generate page about. So this is going to do the exact same thing, except it's going to generate an about page instead of a home page. And it's going to put it in the same place. It's going to go into our pages folder here. And every time it generates a page for you, you'll notice that you have a couple other things here. You also have a test file and you have a dot stories file and those are just for using jest and using storybook which are going to be a bigger focus for the the new tutorial so if you don't know much about testing or storybook that'll be a really good opportunity to learn about that so here now we have our home page so if we just went to slash about we got our about page and we want to get these into the same place or we want to get the links um, both so we can switch from one to the other. So normally this is where I would then go create like a layout with a nav bar and all that kind of stuff. But um, just to kind of save some time, I'm gonna skip past that. And we're just gonna throw these links into each of them so that we can switch between the two pages easily. So we got this here and this here. So now we should have both of our links in each of them. So we can now switch between our home page and our about page really easily. Okay, so that's our whole project right now. And now we're going to deploy this. So um, getting this onto GitHub, there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, the way I'm gonna do it is I'm just going to create, a, get initialize Git and then do an add and a commit. So get init, git add, git commit, first commit. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to create the repository over here. And then we're gonna use this huge absurd git command to shove this whole project up into that repo. So we're going to create a new repository and we're just going to call it mint bean. I always add an extra E. I always do mint a bean. All right, mint bean redwood. And then that's all we need to do. Um, Anthony, we have a question. Sweet, hit me with it. Okay. So it says from Adrian, so home and about don't matter as far as the name. It'll just make a folder called name page, and then the default routes are slash name whatever you named it. Yeah, you got it. So the, the generator is set up in a way that makes it really easy to create the page and have it say whatever you want. And then in this routes folder over here is where it's creating. So we did home, so it just does home and then adds a page to the end of it. And then yeah, it gives you the, the route just like you were saying. So then the about page we did about, so it added page to it and then created the slash about route right there. So the generators are really sophisticated in that they're set up in a way where you can really just 
flow really easily and just say, I want this kind of page. I want it to go this kind of route and then just bam, it does it. So yeah, does that answer the question? Uh, and then one more question. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, and the second question is when you run the dev command, it's automatically watching, right? Yes, exactly. So that's why when I was editing and saving, it was automatically being updated over on the side. So yeah, your, your dev server is already configured to watch for, for changes and, and all that setup. Yeah. Yeah. But the big part of Redwood is DX developer experience. Have you ever heard that term is kind of like a, a term that's getting to be more popular these days is they've thought a lot about the developer experience. So the tool is very much made to just be easy to use and to make sense to help you move quickly. Cool. All good. All right. So I was about to do the git command. So this is going to basically take our project and just push it into that repo that we just made, the mint bean dash RW. And then if we go back over here and refresh, we should see our project appear. Let's see, this is still going. It's funny, everything goes so much slower when you're streaming. <laughs> and then, so once that is done, we're going to be going to Netlify and Vercel to deploy. Um, do people at Mintbean kind of like have much familiarity with like those, those kind of services? Like what, what kind of stuff do you guys usually use when you're like deploying? Anyway. I, think, I think Claire can speak on that. Claire? In like hackathons? Yeah. Uh, I use Netlify a lot. I find it very simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Netlify is great. Yeah, I think for our hackathons mainly, a lot of our devs use Netlify or GitHub pages and sometimes Heroku, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm not sure why this is still hanging. I should have done this by now, but let's see. Let's just try that again and see what happens. All right, good deal. So now we see- Anthony, we have another question. Cool, yeah. So it's from Rob. Anthony, is it true that anyone can get Redwood JS stickers mailed to them anywhere in the world for free by visiting this link, https redwood.js.com slash stickers? That is true. I would. Get, I have. I have stickers. They're, they're right over there. Um, I'm not sure exactly where they are, so I'm not going to run and grab them. But yes, we do send stickers to anywhere in the world. It's very, very important that you get your stickers. Stickers are the most important part of Redwood. There would be no Redwood without stickers. All right. Um, sweet. So now we have our GitHub repo set up. We can now deploy our stuff. So. Um, let me go back and grab my couple extra commands here that we were working with. So we have, as we were showing with the generator for generating pages and things like that, we have the same thing for if we're going to be deploying. So we have this super handy generator here for deploying to Netlify. So Yarn Redwood Generate Deploy Netlify. So what this is going to do is this is going to create a Netlify.toml and as I already talked about how semantic versioning was created by Tom, so was Toml. Toml is named after Tom. It is a configuration language for Tom's obvious minimal language, I think. <laughs> and it is giving you the build commands. So when you upload your project to Netlify, it is going to take your whole project and run these commands. And that's what's going to create the thing that's actually going to be put up onto the internet. So that is what this command here is. So we're going to go over here and we're going to create a new site, new site from Git. And then we're going to select GitHub because who uses Bitbucket? I certainly don't know anyone. And then we have Mint Bean Redwood. And then this will then search through 
all of our repos to get our mint bean. And then it's going to, oh, it did not put our build command in automatically. Usually it does. Oh, I know why, because I changed this, but I did not actually do anything with it. <laughs> I did not put it up to my GitHub repo. And then I'm going to just real quickly throw this up with GitHub graphical editor because my GitHub command line authorization has been messed up and I never bothered to fix it. So I just do this. Um, that's right. Okay. I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to just do this down and dirty and create a new file. And this will be netify.toml. And that'll be there. And we're just going to do that. Okay. So this should now be good to go. All right, look at that. <laughs> so now we got our build commands in there and we're going to just deploy it. And this is going to take a couple minutes. So while that is going, I'll show you what we do for Vercel. So Vercel is going to make just a small change to, I believe, our redwood.toml. So after we do that, you can see the changes it made. So what all this did is it just changed your API proxy path to from Netlify functions to API here. So I'm going to just make sure I change this here. So this will be Netlify dot, wait no, I want redwood dot toml. And we'll be editing API proxy. And then commit changes. And then now this will have our build set up for Vercel. And we're going to do the same basic thing. And this will be github.com slash AJC web dev slash mint bean redwood. And then here you can see that we have this framework preset and then this is using same build command we're using before. So this is already all set up and good to go. And then this is going to deploy and then this is probably still going. Yep. So that's still going. And then this is going to take just a little bit. Luckily, since this is all happening on their servers, me streaming will not affect it, but, um, are there any other questions kind of while we're waiting for this to, to go through? There's some other things I can talk about as well. If anyone's curious about kind of like the history of, of Redwood and, and where it came from. Hey, Anthony, it's Claire. Oh, there you go. Yeah. What's up? Um, I was wondering if you have uh, any project that you've built with Redwood that you wouldn't mind sharing with us. Yeah, um, so I have built out um, a couple things. The The one that is probably the most interesting for me is um, the Redwood Fauna project. So this isn't going to look super exciting, but trust me, it is. <laughs> so this is a project that I created with FaunaDB. And I don't know, you guys are probably not very familiar with something like FaunaDB. So FaunaDB is a database that is made to be distributed across the globe. So if you think about how databases and websites and things used to work in the past, we used to have what were called like monolithic apps. And a monolithic app would mean that you would have your database and you would have like your front end React project. It wouldn't have been React at the time, but you'd have your front end, you have your back end. It would all be in one big project. 
and that would all live on an actual physical machine somewhere. Like there'd be a computer probably in some guy's basement somewhere that people would be accessing. So I would go on my computer and I would type in a URL and my computer would reach out through the series of tubes that is the internet and go to that computer. Now, what we want though is we want everything to be everywhere. We want someone, if they actually want to find a website, we want their trip through that series of tubes to be as short as possible. So we want it to get to a server that could preferably be right down the street from you instead of an entire country or ocean away. So that's kind of the, the main idea behind Fauna is that it's getting your database to be distributed around the world so that everyone has kind of short hops to get there. And the reason why I thought it was super interesting is just because you used GraphQL as a layer in between to get Redwood to talk to Fauna. So there is an article about this where I kind of explain what I did here. And it talks about like what Redwood is, and then it talks about what Fauna is, and then it walks you through creating the Redwood application. So what you're seeing here should look pretty familiar. This is basically exactly what we did. And then you generate a home page, just like we did, and then create your home page, and then you bring in a cell. So this is the stuff that we didn't talk about too much. And then the cell is what's doing your data fetching into the database. So I was talking about how it will tell you whether you have posts or not kind of out of the box. So it's saying, hey, we don't have any posts yet. And then we create our schema definition language, which is how your front and your back end talk to each other so it knows what a post is. A post is something that has a title and that title is something that is a string. And then you set up your GraphQL request, and this is where you're using an API key for Fauna. So if you've ever heard of the 12 factor app and this kind of idea of like how we configure our project and how to use environment variables and things like that, this is very much in that vein. And then we set up a service to just hit the back end. And then I kind of walk through how you actually use Fauna. Fauna has its own query language. And what that means is we were talking a little bit about SQL and how that works. And so instead of SQL, you use something called FQL or you can just use GraphQL kind of commands. And so if you've ever used Mongo and you've like know what like a collection and a document database is, this will, this will be kind of familiar. So I show how to just create a couple simple blog posts, which is not really a blog post, it's just like a title. And then I walk through kind of how to work with the query language. And then you end up with your kind of the front end with your cell is talking to your back end. So I actually, I did a whole talk about this. So I'm kind of, I'm glossing over like tons and tons of information here. It took me like a, a whole 20 minute talk to, to explain this whole project. But if you're interested in that, it was at um, GraphQL Texas and the talk was architecting a full stack Jamstack application with FaunaDB, Redwood JS, and GraphQL, I think is pretty sure was the title. So yeah, so that's like the, the Redwood project that I'm probably most proud of right now and definitely took a lot of work and was like something cool and new that like no one had really done before. So it was really exciting for me to, to get to do. And sweet, so I hope that answered your question. And check it out, this is our website. We can go to our different pages and just like we see, and then we also can go to Vercel. And if we go to Vercel, we can visit our website and bam, exact same thing. So these are now on the internet. And if, you t if any of you now type in this link, you will see this thing that I just made. So in the span of this whole talk, we create a project, create multiple pages, write it between them and deployed to two different providers. So yes, that is, that is the talk. Okay. Thank you all um, super for, cool. thank for you. listening. Yeah, thank you everyone. Um, that was a really great talk, Amy. I feel like I'm ready to go. Sorry, that's my mom. <laughs> I'm ready to go and you know create a Redwood JS app and there's a great community behind it. Um, are there any questions for Anthony? Any last minute questions?
even for Tom or any of the other community members? I have a question. Um, the, uh, what, what kind of use cases do you see for the sort of the multiple deployments? Um, I, I could think of a couple, but I'm curious to like what it was initially intended for and like how uh, you guys uh, see that being applied. Yeah, I would see it as choice for for the developer themselves like some people are going to want to use netlify some people are going to want to use vercel some people already know like netlify's identity auth provider really well whereas some people may know vercel's service really well so it's not so much that we think that there's a good use case for deploying to both of them like there may be for me it's more so about giving that option to developers and showing that we're not favoring one over the other and that this is a, the, that Redwood itself is portable, that it, it can be easily deployed to different targets because it's good to have that flexibility. And just cause you know, people are so worried about lock-in, like people talk about lock-in all the time. It's like, I'm not particularly worried about getting locked in to Netlify cause they seem to keep getting better. So if the thing I'm locked into continues to improve, that's, I don't really see that as a problem, but we know that this is a huge concern for a lot of people. So we want to give lots of different deploy options. You can also deploy to the serverless framework is uh, another deploy target that we've had the community members do. I did not demonstrate that because doing so would have required explaining how to set up like AWS credentials, which would have been way outside the, the scope of this. But um, yeah, and then also like, it'd be good for testing. So like if you want to throw it up on these two different targets and you know, if you want to see like if you're having some sort of performance issue, like is the performance issue your app or is it the provider? This would be a good way to kind of A-B test between the two of them. Also, you're the guy who wrote the Bison article, right? Yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, it was great. I loved it. It was funny. It was, I was going to write it myself if someone else didn't. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was really fantastic. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Great, great talk, by the way. I didn't get to say that, but this has been a great introduction to Redwood. I appreciate it. Cool. Great. That's what I was hoping for.